Hello, my name is Miriam de Visser and I'm a PhD student at the University Medical Center in Utrecht. I will present the study design of the iFocus, the first in human clinical phase one trial on the combination of histotripsy and immune checkpoint inhibition. Immune therapy has been one of the biggest breakthroughs in the medical field of the last decades. This graph shows the overall survival curves of patients with advanced melanoma that were treated in immune checkpoint inhibition. These survival rates of nearly 50% after more than six years of follow-up are unprecedented in this advanced disease patient population. The flattening of the survival curve indicates that those patients that have an objective response to the treatment are likely to have a durable response. It's good to keep in mind that some of these patients were only treated for a few months with immune checkpoint inhibition, but still experienced those long-lasting responses. However, unfortunately, there's still a substantial amount of patients that does not respond to the immune therapy. These survival curves are in melanoma, a tumor type with a high mutational burden that might therefore be more easily be recognized by the immune system compared to other tumor types with a lower mutational burden, such as pancreas. A correlation between the tumor mutational burden and the response to PD-1 treatment was identified in a prior study, which shows the uh, number of mutations on the x-axis and the objective response on the y-axis for the different tumor types. Therefore, many research is focused on methods that can convert the cold, poorly immunogenic tumors into hot tumors that are responsive to immune therapy and also to improve the um, effect of the immune system in those patients that at the moment do not respond to immune therapy. There are indications that histotripsy, a focused ultrasound modality that uses high powers to mechanically fractionate the tumor to a subcellular debris, has the potential to provoke an immune stimulating effect. Fractionation of the tumor can result in the release of tumor, neoantigens, and danger associated molecular patterns and thereby potentially aid the immune system to recognize the cancer cell again. These are some of the results obtained by preclinical, mostly murine studies assessing histotripsy. Histotripsy was found to increase T-cell infiltration to alter levels of cytokines and to lead to an increased release of danger-associated molecular patterns. Several studies in reported increased overall survival in mice treated with histotripsy in different tumor models. In the study of Erankiedal on a neuroblastoma model, mice treated with combination therapy of histotripsy and immune checkpoint inhibitors, combination therapy, um, had a significant better survival compared to not only the untreated mice, but also to the mice that were treated with either histotripsy alone or immune checkpoint inhibitors alone. Iranki also identified an abscopal effect in which treatment of a tumor on one side of the body resulted in shrinkage of the untreated tumor on the other side of the body. Moreover, he found an vaccination effect in which overall 100% of the mice initially treated with the combination therapy with histotripsy and immune checkpoint inhibitors um, survived a re-challenge with tumor cells without further therapy. This August, the first human clinical study of histotripsy in liver tumors was published by Vidal V. In this phase one study, liver tumors were ablated with histotripsy using a histosonics device. It revealed important results on safety and feasibility. They found uh, an overall acute success, uh, technical success in 100% of the liver tumors and they did not observe any device-related adverse events. In this study, blood samples were taken seven days post-treatment to explore immunological parameters, yet no significant change was found. However, two out of seven patients had showed indications of a systemic response to the local histotripsy treatment. The iFocus will be the first in human phase one study on the combination of histotripsy and immune checkpoint inhibition. We are planning to submit the study protocol to the IRB beginning of this December. The study is divided in two cohorts, a phase 1A cohort in which 
first three patients are treated with histotripsy alone, followed by six patients that will be treated with the combination therapy. After a safety stop, we will proceed to phase 1b, in which we will treat another 18 patients. In the iFocus study, we will enroll patients with different, tu different tumor types according to a basket design. These are patients with advanced cancer that do not have standard of care treatment options. Treatment must be feasible and evaluable in two different lesions. This is the global outline of the study. The first administration of the immune therapy um, will be administered at day one. It will, come in, it will be a combination of anti-PD-1, nivolumab, and anti-CTLA-4, epilimumab. One week after this administration of the combination immune therapy, uh, patients will undergo a single histotripsy treatment procedure. Treatment with immune checkpoint inhibitors will be continued with a total of four cycles of combination therapy followed by PD-1 monotherapy every four weeks. Treatment will be continued for a maximum of two years. However, it can be stopped earlier by the clinical oncologist if there's an indication of stable disease or response. In case of disease progression or severe toxicity, um, ICSI treatment will be halted. We will use the clinical Sonalive Hypo system of Profound Medical to perform the histotripsy treatments. The system allows for error guided histotripsy and also real time thermometry monitoring for safety. The histotripsy procedure will be an outpatient treatment procedure. Patients will be sedated and vital parameters will be closely monitored during treatment by the anesthesiology team. The patient will be observed for at least three hours after treatment, after which they can be discharged home. Treatment pa pattern and sonication parameters are summarized here. There's another presentation on this focused ultrasound platform on the ex vivo validation tests of the clinical system. In our study design, we decided to only fractionate less than 10% of the total tu tumor volume to release tumor-associated antigens and danger-associated molecular patterns while preserving the tumor draining routes to the draining lymph nodes. These are our main study endpoints and the methods to obtain them. In this phase one study, we will closely monitor the patients for adverse events, especially because immune-related adverse events are common in combination immune checkpoint inhibition. For the second dairy endpoints, radiological and immunological data will be obtained to learn more about the response to histotripsy treatment in human. We are closely collaborating with the Center of Translational Immunology that will guide the immunological analysis. This is an overview of all study procedures. For the immunological monitoring, biopsies, biopsies will be obtained at baseline and seven days after histotripsy treatment with an additional optional biopsy if the patient consents a treatment progression. Blood samples will be taken at start of the ICSI uh, administration, so day one, prior to and directly after histotripsy treatment at day eight, nine, 10, 12, um, and thereafter at day 22 and 64. After 12 weeks, we will uh, conduct an additional MRI to assess the radiological response. The disease progression will be monitored using a CT scan. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. There's growing evidence that indicate that histotripsy can provoke an immune stimulatory effect and that there is a potential synergetic effect between histotripsy and immune checkpoint inhibitors. We have therefore designed a first in human phase one study to assess these effects in the clinic. However, we do realize that our data will only be a part of the puzzle and that more data is needed to answer important questions on histotripsy and ICSI. This first in human study will add important data on the combination of histotripsy and Im immune checkpoint inhibitors and can be used as a building block for further studies. I'd like to thank you for your attention and, of course, the wonderful study team at the UMC Utrecht, as well as our partners um, and uh, the funders of this study. Thank you.